Good morning, grade 10 learners. My name is Makovani. I am with my colleagues Awonke, Precious, and Muskan. Today's lesson is about personal development. Personal development is about seeing potential in oneself, noticing one's success, and improving where one lacks. The world today is filled with many misconceptions about the type of person you are meant to be. We especially find teenagers following this trend, which often lead them to losing a sense of direction, making them tend to the use of dangerous substances, engage in unhealthy sexual activity and drug abuse to help them fill up this void. In this lesson, we are going to talk about ways to prevent them. And learners, I am Awange Figela and I will be talking about health and healthy relationships so what do we mean when we speak of health? Health means being in a state of complete physical, which is your body, mental, your mind, and social well-being, which is your quality of life, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmary. And healthy relationships, what do we what are we referring to when we are talking about healthy relationships? We are talking about relationships that involve trust, that involve respect and open communication. And this means that both parties in this relationship are comfortable to be here. They feel safe to be in this relationship and there are no signs of a toxic relationship which can mentally or physically hurt a person and can change their lifestyle or influence whatever it is that they do. And moving on still under the topic of health, we have health problems and there are multiple health problems which you as teenagers may go through now in the present and even in the future. So at first we have obesity. What is obesity? Obesity is the state of being grossly fat or overweight and you might be wondering how can i tell if i am grossly fat or overweight well we have a bmi chart and this is a chart that tells you what weight you are expected to be in at your age and with the height that you have so this this chart just helps you determine whether you are healthy or not and secondly, we have anxiety. Anxiety is the feeling of worry or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So if you have the fear of the unknown, you are not going to be at ease. You are not going to relax. You will have that feeling just that just isn't stable. So this is what we call anxiety. And thirdly, we have sexually transmitted diseases, short for STIs. And these are the kinds of diseases that you get through engaging in unsafe sex or rather unprotected sex. So this means that if you yourself or your partner has an STI, it is highly possible that you're going to get the STI by engaging in unprotected sex. And um, examples of the STIs that you might get are uh, HIV and AIDS, chlamydia, gonorrhea, or genital herpes, the list goes on. And we have injury or violence, and this is when you feel threatened. This is when someone is inflicting pain on you physically, mentally, in any type of way. If you are being abused or in an environment that just isn't safe at all, this is a problem. And we have substance abuses. We know the kinds of substance abuses we have. We have drugs, we have alcohol, we have marijuana, we have a lot of things. And these can cause harm to your body, which is a health problem. And on your body, it can be physical harm, it can be emotional harm, it can be mental harm. Either way, it is going to cause harm so we have to avoid it by all means i explained health problems and now we are going to be focusing on solutions to health problems so number one you must follow a healthy lifestyle by eating healthy foods and exercising at least 
three times a week. So you are going to try to eat healthy foods. You can get recommendations from your doctor. You can research what healthy foods can you eat and try to at least, you know, engage yourself in some physical activities just so you are healthy. And secondly, you can always get professional help to deal with anxiety. So if you feel you have the symptoms of anxiety, all in all, you can just seek professional help. It helps talking to a person who knows who knows what they are talking about, who has learned about anxiety, who knows how to help you get through anxiety. And we can also practice safe sex. So if you are sexually active, you know you have to practice safe sex. You always have to use protection. You always have to be in an open relationship with your partner, communicate with your partner about having safe sex so that you are healthy so that you live a healthy life and you avoid diseases and infections at all costs and we have to report violence to authorized personnel to get help so if you feel violated in any kind of way you always have to report this matter to the authorities so that it can be dealt with the right way you never have to keep anything to yourself because emotionally you are not going to be okay and that can affect a lot of things in your life and then lastly you have to acknowledge that you have an addiction or you are practicing the wrong action and therefore get professional help. You can go to the rehab to get help if you are using substances. Um, you can get help. There is always help. So if ever you are using drugs, any kind of drugs and you are drinking heavily, you can always get help. And we are done with health. We are moving to healthy relationships. We did mention that healthy relationships include trust, they include respect, they include open communication. And these are some of the characteristics of a healthy relationship. If your relationship either with your parents or with your friends or with your siblings or this is a relationship with your partner, it has toxic communication, it has lack of respect, it has unfairness, it has uh, patterns of disrespect. This is a toxic relationship and you cannot afford to be in that relationship because emotionally you're not going to be okay mentally it's going to disturb you and it's not going to bring about change in your life it's just going to make life worse for you so we there is an importance of having a healthy relationship there are importance of having a healthy relationship and these are uh healthy relationship can improve your self-esteem, academic performance, and health-related issues. So if you are in a healthy relationship, there is no way you are going to doubt yourself because there is assurance from the other person that you are what you are and it is okay. And academically, you are not going to perform badly because you are not stressed and th there is no need for you to worry academically and health related issues you are not going to have stress so you are not stressed there's nothing that is going to happen and if ever you are sick in any kind of way you are not going to be worse because that person is not constantly keeping you on the edge and secondly individuals are likely to feel more happier and satisfied with their lives so if a relationship is healthy you are going to feel more like you are supposed to be there and you are going to enjoy your life to the fullest and thirdly one self of worth and belonging can be increased mm -hmm. therefore you will feel less lonely so in a relationship any kind of relationship mm -hmm. if it is a real relationship and it is healthy there is no way you are going to feel lonely or you are going to doubt yourself or your self-worth because the other person ensures that you know how important or valuable you are to them and also that just gives you assurance that you are in the right place and fourthly 
we there is no fear of retribution or retaliation in making decisions or coming up with ideas so it is important in a relationship that there is equal there is equal authority so nobody is is bigger than the other you must always be able to to express yourself and tell your opinions without having to worry what the other person is going to say or react and this is all that i have for you and a health and healthy relationships good morning great and learners my name is precious mutiba and today i'll be talking about confidence and self-esteem makubani has explained that personal development as um seeing potential in oneself noticing one's success and improving where one might lack so in order for a person to have confidence and self-esteem it start with personal development there won't be um any personal development or self-discovery if one can notice like the their confidence and their self-esteem right what is confidence ne? confidence it happens internal meaning that it's an internal struggle and it's a feeling of trust in one's abilities qualities and judgment self-esteem it's an external struggle which is the way one sees themselves on the inside and how they portray themselves on the outside People find it difficult to discover themselves and uh, they also find it difficult to see their personal development because they have low self-esteem and low confidence. Now, we have factors that contribute to low self-esteem and low confidence. We have um, being bullied. And when we talk about being bullied, it does not only happen physical, it can also be emotional and verbal body shaming whereby people make you feel like you are different from them they judge you based on how your body looks and how you look not knowing yourself whereby you are unsure of yourself you doubt yourself a lot feeling stupid poor academic performance whereby you get um low marks in class lack of confidence not being able to follow your dreams and this can happen due to um, our different backgrounds at home we also have sexual physical or emotional abuse disapproval from parents and social beauty standards personal development comes with a lot of one being able to notice where they lack, one being able to notice their mistakes and also being able to rectify those mistakes. Now, we have solutions for low self-esteem and low confidence. A person can build positive relationships, can be kind to themselves, a person can surround themselves themselves with um positive people because obviously if you surround yourself with negative people there's no way you'll be able to notice the right things and the wrong things another thing a person has to accept themselves a person has to allow themselves to be who they are um another thing that a person can do is to do what makes them happy which is very important a person can do mirror talk whereby you, you just look at the mirror and say whatever you want because sometimes people find it difficult to talk to people about their problems set time aside for yourself and also take care of your body so now we are going to talk about a goal a goal is an objective or an aim an individual strives to achieve. As I explained that um, personal development is about noticing one's success and improving where one lack. A goal can help you notice your success and the things that you have achieved. So we have two different types of goals. We have a short-term goal and a long-term goal. A short-term goal is a goal you want to achieve in a short period of time. For example, now that you are in grade 10, you want to see yourself passing at the end of the year. That is what we call a short-term goal. Now, 
A long-term goal, it is something you want to achieve in the future. Most of you want to see yourself doing grade 12, passing grade 12, going to university. Some, after passing grade 12, they want to look for jobs. That's what we call a long-term goal because it's a goal that you have and it will happen in the future. So now I'm going to talk about the reason why goals are important. Goals are important because they act as a motivation. For example, let's say we, you have to write a test in the following week. You have been trying to study for that test, but it's very hard. You don't even understand what you're studying. You don't even know where to start. You sometimes feel like giving up. If you have a goal, that goal will motivate you to work hard and not give up. The goal will act as a motivation. It will always remind you that you have a goal of passing the test. Now you have to work hard. That's a short term goal. Goal will always be there to remind you why you need to work hard. Let's say for an example, you are studying in order to change your family situation because you come from a very poor background. At a, at a certain point, you feel like school is hard and you sometimes feel like you want to give up because of the goal you have of changing your family background. It will remind you, your goal will remind you that no, you can't quit school. Instead, you have to work hard, stay in school to change your family situation. Goals can help you stay committed. Goals can help you know exactly what you want and they will always help you fulfill your dreams. Let's say you have friends and you want to fit in, in your friend's circle. Your friends want you to quit school and go to smoke drugs and you want to study to change your family situation. Because of the goal you have of changing your family situation, it's knowing what you want. You will let your friends do what they want and you will stay in school and do what you want. Goals are important because they provide a direction. You don't know where to start studying. But because of the goal you have, it will give you a direction. They provide motivation, as I mentioned. They help you focus and work hard. They can help you stay committed in everything that you do. Good morning, everyone. I'm Muskan Omata, and I'll be concluding today's lesson. Our last topic for today under personal development is stress, its causes, the effects of stress, and methods of dealing with stress. My fellow colleagues have explained what personal development is, they've given you a definition, and explained some of the subtopics relating to ways you can develop yourself as a grade 10 learner. Right. Stress is a change that causes emotional or physical strain. So stress can occur because of internal factors or external factors. When we speak about internal factors, it could be because of you having low self-esteem and wanting to fit in with your peers or having a low self-confidence. And when we speak about external factors, we could be speaking about your parents pressuring you to get 100% in your examination or trying to meet social standards within your community. Other much more definite examples include your examinations, your relationships. This could be a romantic relationship. This could be a father-daughter relationship, a mother-son relationship, or even your relationship with your fellow peers in your classroom. That could stress you out as well if it is not a healthy relationship. We also get stressed out because of peer pressure or unrealistic goal, set, goal setting. So if you set goals for yourself that you know are unattainable or out of your capabilities, you may end up being stressed because of that. We also incur stress because of our community or the environment we grow up in. It could be an abusive environment, you could have many family issues that cause you to have a lot of stress, or you could just grow up in an environment that doesn't allow you to study properly because it's always noisy, and that could make you stressed. We also, as I mentioned earlier, we do have internal causes of stress, and one of them is insecurities. Being insecure about the way you look, the way you talk, the way you eat, or anything that makes you feel like you are not good enough to be a part of the crowd. That may stress you out and you may feel like you are not a part of the crowd. 
now that we know what causes stress, we are going to do the effects of stress and why it is important to cope with stress. It is important to cope with stress because if you don't, you may have health issues. Examples of stress-related health issues involve ulcers, depression, anxiety, or body aches, blood pressure, or even heart problems. So it's important to take care of your stress so that you don't physically affect yourself in any way. You also have lack of motivation when you are stressed out. And when you are unmotivated, you don't really want to do anything. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to see anyone. You don't want to go to school or participate in anything that you should be participating in at your age. You also may face poor academic performances. We achieve a lot in our academics when we cope with our stress and manage our stress. I know we're all from different backgrounds and we all are stressed out by different things. It could be your religion, it could be your peers, your parents, your family, your culture, and whatever it is that you have in your life. But you need to know how to cope with these so that you don't have any health issues or you don't suffer in school or you don't suffer with sleeping well, eating well, and being healthy overall. Right, now that we have discussed the causes of stress and the effects of stress, we are now at ways to cope with stress. These are known as de-stressors, and they usually are what make you happy, or it's usually activities, sports, or hobbies that you participate in that bring you joy as an individual. So examples include exercise, getting a gym membership, going for a jog, um, getting a routine where you exercise in your room every day. That could help you cope with your stress levels. Going out with your friends, you know, just unwinding, um, meeting up for lunches, um, going for a drive. That could help you cope with stress because you are releasing all of the pressure you may have built up on the inside. Eating healthy also may help you to reduce the effect, as we mentioned earlier, of having bad health. If you eat healthy while in a stressful situation and you take care of your well-being, then you won't suffer from the effects we mentioned earlier. If you pray, a lot of people use praying as a coping mechanism for stress. Praying, going to church, going to the mosque, reading the Bible, um, or just reading the Quran for Muslim people that helps cope with stress for a lot of people. You can also read a book, open a, open a novel, sit down, kick back and just read through the afternoon, enter a whole different world, just help you escape from what you may be facing in reality. But you can also do this by engaging in a hobby. So I know a lot of us like to draw or write poetry these are also considered as ways of dealing with stress another very important factor that i see grade tens failing to do is managing their time you need to manage your time efficiently if you manage your time i promise you most of your stress will disappear automatically because now you know what you're doing when you're doing it how you're doing it and why you're doing it and if you answer these questions for yourself you won't find yourself in stressful situations where you're trying to submit your meta assignment the same day you got it or trying to do things that are way beyond your basic capabilities right also another de-stressor that i think is very important and the most effective is talking to someone talk to someone guys seek for help Ask people to listen to what is it that you may be going through or what is it. Ask for advice, what you think other people would do in your situation. So you can either talk to a trusted friend, a teacher, one of your peers in class. But I do suggest that you get professional help. So seek professional guidance from someone who deals with stress on a daily basis. That may be a much more better way for most of few grade tens. Right. We've come to the end of our lesson and I just really want to thank everyone for watching thus far. I hope you benefited and I hope you find our lesson 
effective enough to implement it into your daily lives. I hope you learned how to develop yourself, your self-confidence, how to engage in healthy relationships, how to take care of your body, how to take care of your social well-being, how to be confident, how to fix your self-esteem, or just now, as we mentioned, dealing with stress in the correct way. These are ways and these are what we felt was very necessary to know as a grade 10 learner under the topic of personal development. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.